Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today I'm going to share my process for fitting my one leg toile for the um, wide leg PDF pattern that's a free download at Peppermint Magazine. I do want to also say that I've been referring it to it to it as my Peppermint Magazine pants, but really it was designed by In the Folds, which is a another small pattern company and they did such a nice job so I just want to apologize to them for not saying it was a collaboration with In the Folds and Peppermint Magazine but if you head down to the description below my video you can um, go get a free PDF of this pattern if you want to try it. So some considerations when you're picking out a pattern. Let's start there. You want to learn this top down center out method. If it's brand new to you, I think it's easiest to pick a pattern that has a trouser or wide leg style because this will make working with your one leg toile fairly easy and you'll be able to concentrate on learning the method and how to work from top down and then center out. Once you've played with a few different toiles or even the same toile several times, you'll be amazed at how much more comfortable you'll get um, with this method. So you want to pick out a pattern that's easy to work with. If it has a straight waistband, that's a plus, but I can tell you that the wide leg pants that I worked on has a curved waistband and that worked out okay. That was my first attempt. And really, as long as you make a really sturdy, non-stretch curved waistband, it still works out okay. So that's the first thing you want to think about, picking out your pattern. Try to pick out a pattern that you're going to make the way the designer intended. And what I mean by that is you want to look at either the line drawing or a photo. And here I have the line drawing for the peppermint wide leg pants and you can see you can see the basic style of them so in looking at this you want to sort of agree with yourself that you're going to make it in a similar style for example if you try to taper this leg that's going to create more issues than you probably want to deal with when you're learning a brand new fitting method so pick a pattern and try to stay t true to what the designer intended, at least for your first pair. I'm not saying that you can't take in or let out or adjust, you know, as you get more proficient with it, but if you're just starting, try to stay true to what the designer intended. When you go to pick out your size, before you do that, check and see how much ease the pattern has, because that will give you some information um, regarding you know how much extra room is there with the measurements they give you so for example I picked the size F to make my peppermint wide leg pants because luckily for me that 43 full hip measurement is my exact full hip measurement so I was able to then go look down at the ease and say alright so this pattern has two and an eighth inch ease in my size. So knowing that gave me an idea of how loosely fitting this pants pattern was going to be. So definitely check out the ease and you know have that noted when you're picking out your size. So you want to check out your ease. Um, and then the next thing you want to look at is picking out the size based on your full hip measurement. So I did that, but then I checked my waist and I checked my upper thigh measurements um, against the pattern just to make sure I would have enough fabric to wrap around my waist and my upper leg. And it worked out that by adding the wedge at the waist and adding a little bit of a safety seam allowance along my side seam allowed me to use that one size F. But if your waist or your... Um, you know, your upper thigh is significantly bigger or smaller than your full hip, you can grade between sizes. But remember, when you grade between sizes, you want to pick a different size for either the side seam or the inseam. So for example, if your 
waist is significantly bigger than your full hip, you can size up on the side seam and use the full hip line along the crotch and inseam. So what you probably should try not to do is blend between sizes on the same line. So for example, don't blend between a larger size at the waist to a smaller size on the leg because you're changing the you're changing the design by doing that. Now that's not to say you won't do it later, but you want to just start out as true to the original design as possible. So in my case, I just use size F and that worked out for me, but take all of those things into consideration. All right, so those are some considerations for picking out your pattern and picking out your size. Remember to consider the ease. So now let's take a look at creating your waistband. The most important thing to get started or the first thing you wanna to do to get started is you wanna create a non-stretch waistband. This is gonna be where you're going to attach the top of your single leg toile. It will help you fit your fr center front and back first down to the hem, making sure that's parallel to the floor, and then you're gonna work from center out. So having a non-stretch waistband that that stays put and is fitted is super important. So I wanna show you my first waistband here. I ripped off all of my uh, Velcro so I could reuse it. So it looks all ratty, but basically what was happening here, you can see I had a non, you know, a sew-in um, non-stretch interfacing, and I just turned the top edge under, um, and really it was starting to stretch out. So this could work if you're using this curved waistband to fit one or two pairs of pants, but if you wanna make a waistband that's going to last, that you can use for multiple pairs, or multiple twalls and multiple designs. It needs to be a little bit sturdier than this. So what I ended up doing was creating a waistband that has fusible interfacing on both the waistband and facing. Then I sewed it together as if I were putting together a, you know, a real waistband that I was gonna attach to some legs. And then I put my um, Velcro on. Now I wanna be really clear about this Velcro for this method, I'm gonna rename my Velcro sticky pins or sticky safety pins because it's really just there to help you manage your fabric as you're trying on your toile and as you're making fit adjustments. So you can see here on my actual waistband, I have a half an inch strip in the seam allowance, the lower seam allowance on my waistband, and in the back I have it on my center back. And this is where the seam allowance um, of the, the back, center back crotch seam will go. So it makes it very easy to feel where the center back is, and it makes it very easy to attach the center back, you know, directly on the center back. What you don't want to do is take this strip of Velcro and apply it to the inside of your toile because then you're gonna be Velcro landlocked, okay? You wanna be able to easily shift your fabric around, add a little bit of ease to the top of the waistline if, if that's what you need, um, and just, you know, try it, be able to take it apart and retry it, shift things around, um, you know, especially when you're fitting the top down, you have to get your center front and your center back crotch edges at the waistline at the right height so that your inseam and your hem are parallel to the floor. So you don't want to shellac the inside of your toile with Velcro. Let me show you the inside of my toile. Here's my toile and you can see what I did. This is the back leg right here. You can see I attached that Velcro right along the stitching line that marks the half an inch of my um, seam allowance on the center back. And I put a really long strip there. Why did I put a really long strip? Because I added four inches to the top waistline edge of my pattern. So I wanted to make sure I had enough vertical Velcro to be able to release it and readjust it to any position that I thought I might need. So because you don't know where your waistline is gonna end up, 
front and back. Give yourself a long strip, sew it on. And then also just for comfort, if you put the soft Velcro on the inside of your toile and the itchy side of your Velcro on your waistband, you won't get scratched while you're um, fitting your one leg toile. So that is my little Velcro story at the center back. If we look inside, again, I just put one strip in the center of the front and back leg. The strip cannot be anywhere near the side seam. So you can see here, let me just show you what I did with my side seam. This is my side seam here. And you can see I only sewed it up to about crotch level. And then I actually used, let me fold it in half so you can see here. Um, I used Wonder Clips to hold it closed right on the edges when I was doing my initial fitting from the top down at the center front and back. So that way I didn't have to take my side seam apart to fit the front and back. I didn't really talk about this last week. Your front and back side seams may not end up being equal. Okay, you may have to take in the back more than the front or vice versa. So it may be that you'll have to unsew your side seam and you might have to unsew it pretty far down to get everything to hang right and look the way you want. So for me to start out with, I only sewed it to crotch level and then I left it open and I just used my little Wonder Clip friends like this. I just clipped them on the ends, you know, like this to put it on. So that way my um, my side seam was closed, but you know it wasn't flopping around, but then I could easily change what was happening when I got to the center out portion of my fitting. So again, if we look inside, you can see that my Velcro strips are really far away from that side seam area where I know I'm gonna be adjusting. So again, sticky safety pins. Let's think of them like that. So that's my story with my waistband and prepping my toile. I also think it's important to show what your pattern looked like when you started and then what you ended up with, with for changes. So before I show you that, let me just finish up with my toile here. I used a red Sharpie marker to mark where my waistline ended up after all my fitting was done. And you can see here, let me turn it upside down. So we're looking at the waistline here. This is the crotch seam. You can see I measured at the center back. I did not have to add or remove anything from the original pattern. I was right at that four inch line um, because remember I added four inches up here. Then by the time I got to the side seam, I ended up with can't read my writing. I ended up um, I ended up adding like an inch. So if I go down to four inches, yep, I added I ended up adding an inch and a quarter to the side seam. So if I had been working with this pattern without anything extra at the top, I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have been able to get the inseam to hang properly because I needed to um, add some length, an inch and a quarter, to my side seam. So of course in the front, it's going to be that same inch and a quarter. And then over here at my center front, I actually added one and a half inches um, at center front. So I dropped my front rise down an inch and a half. So in the back, my at the center back, it stayed the same as the original pattern. At the side seam, I dropped my side seam an inch and a quarter, and at my center front, I dropped it an inch and a half. All right, so now let's look at the pattern. After I took my toile off, I was gonna go right to my fabric because I wanted to make a pair. So I left an half an inch of extra up at the top just in case I needed to lower something. So this blue line right here is where I cut the edge of my, um, my finished pattern. So really it was down at the original, but then I gave myself a half an inch safety seam allowance when I was sewing up my, my real pair of um, peppermint wide leg pants. So 
you can see here this blue line is over to here so you can see how I had to add to my side seam. I also shortened my dart that much and then I decided because they were wide leg pants and I had to come out to here at my waist I just kept that going instead of bringing it back to the original so I basically added an inch all the way down my back leg just in the spirit of keeping everything loose and wide leg and you know I didn't want to come in and create a hip curve I wanted to try to keep my side seam as straight as possible so that's the changes I had in the back and then in the front um, you can see here in the front you can see I added my one and a half inches at center front all the way across um, and then when I got here it was a little bit less but this is cut off now because of the pocket and that brings up another really good point when you're adjusting your pattern you have to go back in and adjust your pattern pieces as well so I'm going to show you that in a minute as well but basically I added a little bit to my side seam and then just like in the back I just kept it going straight down so I ended up adding a half an inch um, to my original cut line um, which is this pink line all right so I, I raised up I added all of this length you know from here to here this is all extra length I had to add to get the pants to fit properly during this fitting process did the scoop or did the crotch change? The answer to that is yes. So if you look here, and I'm just gonna draw with a different color marker here. So my original crotch was, I'm sorry, let's just do in the front. So my original crotch was from here to here. Okay, that's the original pattern. Then I added this extra up here, and I ended up keeping this amount right here. So what did that do to my crotch? It lowered it in the front. Okay, so can we call that a scoop? I don't know if I would call it a scoop, but I would call it um, deepening the curve. So, I mean, we can mince words and um, you know, you can call it whatever you want, but basically the crotch curve was adjusted. So the top down center out method does actually adjust the crotch curve based on where your center front and center back end up um, from your waist down. Okay, so I adjusted it a whole inch and a half here. Now in the back, I did not in this particular case you can see I mean this is really my half inch safety seam allowance up here so the crotch in the back for this pair stayed the same but you're gonna discover when you start working with this method and you start fitting the top center front and center back waistline um, at the height that it needs to be front and back you'll notice you are changing your crotch curve, okay? And then, you know, keep in mind the crotch edge and the inseam are all working together. And another thing I just want to show you here on my muslin, you'll notice on this entire muslin, there's not a single grain line or horizontal balance line drawn on it. That was not because I was lazy. That's because you use your turned up hem as your horizontal balance line. So if I just fold this back up here, I had it pinned and you know basted it up. This hem needs to be parallel to the floor. That's your horizontal balance line. Now if you want to draw some lines on it, it's not going to hurt anything. If, if you want to use those to kind of see how the fabric is moving, you can. But just know that this hem is your horizontal balance line. Okay? So that that is my pattern with my adjustments. I'm just going to quickly show you here. If you make changes like this, 
Okay, so like if you add, let's look at the front. If you raise your front, okay, the pocket, um, the pocket itself does not need to be adjusted because you're just going to line that pocket opening up with the new top edge. But what does change is if you add ease. So if I put this pocket right on top of my pattern, you can see that I had to extend it. This was the original side seam. I extended it to match my adjustments. Okay, so I, I did the pocket bag. And then I also did, I'm sorry, this is the, the front pocket facing. Okay, here's my pocket bag. This is what goes underneath. Okay, and I just want to show you one nifty little trick here. If you're going to be using your pocket, meaning you want to put some stuff into your pocket, if you sew it as you fitted it, you might not be able to get your hand in the opening to put something in there because it's going to be snug against your body if you fitted the waist and the upper hip area, tummy area snug. So you can very easily add some ease to the front pocket opening to fit stuff in. And basically what you do is you create a quarter inch extra on the front pocket facing and you blend to zero at the bottom of the pocket bag like this. So this green area is the, the ease. So obviously, if I add to this wedge to create the ease, I have to add it to the leg itself. So let me just get my pattern over here. So you'll notice what I did was I added that same wedge onto my leg. Let me just draw it green so you can see it here. So see right here, and it goes to zero at where the pocket bag is. Okay, so I added that additional wedge so the front pocket opening would match. Okay, so basically I've made the front pocket opening a quarter inch longer. So you might be asking yourself, well, how do I then put it together and is my top of my leg going to be you know, looser now? The answer to that is no, because what's going to maintain your, the fit of your pants is the pocket bag itself. You'll notice I did not add that wedge to the pocket bag. So if I put this all together, you sew this, flip it to the inside so it looks like this, then you add the pocket bag, and I'm just going to pin these together so you can kind of see how this works. Now you can see what happens here is, see how the leg and the front pocket facing are sticking out. When you go to sew your side seam, you push this back in like this, and it creates ease for your hand. I'm just going to pin it so I can show you. So let me just turn it this way so you can see. And turn it upside down. But basically you can see now there's a little bit of ease for your hand to go in. And when this is wrapped around your body, it's not going to stick out like that. It will lay close to you, but you'll have the ease to put your hand in there or your phone or whatever it is that you want to put into your pocket. So that's how you can add a little bit of ease to the front pocket opening. All right, so to finish this tutorial, I'm going to show you my pants and I'm also going to show you a quick little video clip and you can you know walk with me down my sidewalk and you can see how the peppermint wide leg pants fit me and how they look as I'm walking around so let's first look at the pants here on my work surface all right so I can tell you I probably will be making some of these out of linen for next summer to make a nice cool pair of these pants because it's fall, I decided to go with a lightweight black denim. I'm really, really pleased with the way they came out. You can see here, there's my waistband. And I have a, you know, just, I think this is actually a pretend um, shell button. It's plastic. Um, and then if I open them up, I just want to show you. There is my fly. 
Okay, and the way I finished my waistband is I folded it up to, to reveal the top of the zipper there, and then I just stitched the waistband down, and you can see I left my really wide seam allowances in place here. I don't know if that's going to annoy me. Maybe I'll shorten, you know, maybe I'll trim those later, but I didn't seem to notice them while I was wearing the pants, but that's the wide seam allowance. On I ended up sewing it at an inch because I added the safety seam allowance. So that's where that extra half inch ended up. You know, at the hem, you can see I just turned my hem up like this. So there's my um, side seam. There's my inseam. And then in the back, I did top stitch my crotch seam so it wouldn't bust open when I sat down because it is pretty fitted through my waist, hips, um, until it comes down to below my full hip where it starts to, um, you know, ease up and, you know, you can have that nice swingy full leg. The interesting thing is all of my pants in my closet, or jeans even, fitted jeans, with waistbands and zippers, I can pull those on and off because of where I put my waistband normally, not on my smallest part, right? I put it a little bit lower and I can just slide them on and off because my my lower waist or my high, you know, like my tummy or, you know, where I put my waistband is usually very closely the same measurement as my full hip. But because I was wearing my firm waistband on my actual waist, at the smallest part of me, I have to actually unzip these to get them on and off. And that actually makes them very comfortable to wear. The waistband is not too tight, but they also are not sliding around. I don't feel like I need to put a belt on. So they're very comfortable. And, you know, I didn't do any obvious top stitching. I just, you know, I just used black and I top stitched my front pocket openings. I top stitched the crotch. And the rest of it is just, you know, nicely finished. Um, I used a metal jean zipper here. Um, so those are my peppermint pants on the table. Now let's take a look at this stroll down my sidewalk. And I'm not going to talk. You guys can just watch. It's only, a, um, you know, 50 seconds long. Um, I did pause or my husband put stops so you can see how the pants look mid motion in a few places so take a look at this All right, so those are my peppermint wide leg pants in motion. Um, I am so excited that I took t the time to make them. The zipper, the front fly zipper was a little bit different than I normally construct my front fly zipper. So if you're working with this pattern, you know, I recommend giving it a try. It's kind of a hybrid of a cut on, you know, fly with separate pieces. It's kind of a cool technique. So you might want to give your front front fly, you know, this, this technique a try if you're going to work with this pattern. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below and I will help you. Next week I will have another topic in my little pants fitting series. Um, so I hope you'll join me for that. On Friday I'm going to be showing you how to fit your basic bodice muslin after you have your sleeves attached because last week I showed how to draft the sleeve um, and I'm going to be making some fit adjustments to my bodice and I'm going to be sharing all of that with you on Friday live at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on my process with the top down center out method and thank you so much for watching and have a lovely rest of your day.